We've all seen it. We all know the sins Subaru committed with the new Subaru WRX. I'm talking about the exterior design, plastic cladding around the car, the engine and its horsepower, and even the CVT transmission. But does this mean we shouldn't consider getting the new WRX? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. The WRX is an icon when it comes to rally. It is also one of the most popular tuner cars for car enthusiasts. Recently, Subaru unveiled the new 2022 Subaru WRX and sad to say, a lot of people were actually disappointed by it. And already, there are countless videos here on YouTube talking about it. I'm not saying I wasn't disappointed or weirded out by Subaru's decisions when it came to making this car. Oh I was, really I was, trust me. But I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I want to look at this controversy from a different perspective. Because if you think about it, this was the same issue people had with the Honda Civic Type R when it first came out. A lot of people weren't fans of its design, but as time went on, it started to grow onto people and they started liking it. So one of the biggest issues of the new Subaru WRX is the exterior design. When I first saw this car, I'm not gonna lie, my immediate reaction was WTF. Is this a WRX or a crossover? And what's with the plastic cladding around the car? If you look at it from the side, it gives the illusion that the ride height is higher than it actually is. And it made the wheels look smaller. Also, this was what made it look like a crossover in the first place. I don't think there's an option to not have the plastic cladding, but hey, maybe the aftermarket can fix this. I know Subaru shouldn't rely on aftermarket companies too much, but I've seen some renderings of the new Subaru WRX without the cladding or it being the same color of the car overall. I think it actually looks pretty good and I feel like this is achievable with maybe a wrap job or even a paint since aftermarket and modifying is a big part of the car scene anyway. I mean come on, if you get the new Subaru WRX, are you really gonna keep it stock? If you look at the design of the new WRX overall, minus the plastic cladding, it actually looks pretty good. You got the hood scoop up front like any other WRX and LED headlights with daytime running lights, which looks similar to the previous WRX. The rear on the other hand looks incomplete. I mean the taillights look like they came from a Civic. And also the rear bumper has a plastic looking rear diffuser. I think it's unpainted. This works with other cars we all love. But with the new Subaru WRX, I'm not so sure. But since it's unpainted, maybe this can be fixed with either a wrap or a paint job. Or maybe later down the line, there will be a body kit for this where you can change the bumpers. I think it looks fine if the rear diffuser was painted like the rest of the car. The duckbill spoiler looks good in it though in my opinion. Honestly, I feel like Subaru should give the option of not having the plastic cladding around the car. But hey, it is what it is I guess. For the interior, I know Subaru is not really known for the best interiors, I admit that. Subaru is just about sitting inside, driving and enjoying the car. But the interior on the 2022 Subaru WRX is a big step for Subaru. In my opinion, it actually looks good. It's cozy and modern. The main concern people have really, including me, is the infotainment display. I get it, Subaru improved their interior a lot, but apparently the AC and other amenities are accessed via the screen. Other people might not be too bothered about this, but the concern really has something to do with the safety side of things. For example, for the AC, I would prefer to have a physical knob that you can feel instead of accessing it via the infotainment display. Because imagine you're driving and you needed to turn the AC up because it's too hot, but then you struggle to even get to the AC because you can't feel it and you have to keep your eyes on the road. Instead, you take your eyes off the road just to adjust the AC not very safe since it's like involuntarily texting while driving which isn't advisable at all guys. Other than that, the interior looks great in my opinion. Now I want to get to the more gritty stuff here. The most controversial part of the 2022 Subaru WRX. Subaru has been using their EJ engines for a very long time and I mean a very long time, up to the last WRX. This time in the 2022 WRX is the FA24 which is a 2.4 litre. I think this is the same engine in the GR86. But here is where it gets a little iffy for some people, including me of course. So if you've already done your research, you should know by now that the new Subaru WRX makes around 271 horsepower from its 2.4 litre. and the previous WRX made 268 horsepower from its 2 litre. 
So with that 400cc of extra displacement, which was a 20% upgrade, it only made an extra 3 horsepower? I mean, if you're gonna make a successor of an older car, shouldn't it be more powerful? I know the new WRX is more powerful than the previous one, sure, but it only has 3 more horsepower. If you look at the GR86 as an example, the new one makes 228 horsepower from its new 2.4 litre. The previous GT86 on the other hand made 205 horsepower from its 2 litre. So looking at the bump in horsepower, the GR86 is no doubt way more powerful. You can see the horsepower difference. Also the GR86 has an extra 400cc of displacement as well. Do you see where I'm coming from here? The WRX on the other hand made 3 more horsepower than the previous one. For me it didn't make sense at first until I started thinking about it more. This car actually kept me up at night by the way which led me to making this video. <laughs> This is just speculation but it makes sense. You see, if you've done your research already about the new WRX, you should be aware by now that the GT trim which is the top trim only comes with a CVT. FYI Subaru calls it the SPT or Subaru Performance Transmission but we all know it's a CVT guys. And this didn't make sense to me at all because if you think about it, the GT trim has all the features car enthusiasts like for example, the Recaro seats and adaptive suspension, but they offer it with a CVT which turns a lot of car enthusiasts off. But this might be the reason why it only made an extra 3 horsepower because as you know, CVTs aren't meant to be driven hard. They're not really the transmission for performance, unlike a DCT it's belt driven. So maybe Subaru thought that if they made the engine more powerful, the CVT wouldn't be able to handle it. So they limited it to only 271 horsepower. Again, I don't know why Subaru did this. This is only a speculation, but this is a reasonable explanation guys. Still, in my opinion, Subaru should offer the GT trim with a manual since they know that 75% of WRX buyers opt in for the manual option. You can get the base model in a manual but it's very basic, it doesn't have all the fancy gizmo like the adaptive suspension and all that good stuff. So since we're car enthusiasts, what can we do about this? Modify and add aftermarket parts of course. Like I said, you are not going to keep this car stuck, I just know. Since the power might be limited, I'm sure you can just add a few bolt-ons and maybe a tune and bump the horsepower up even more. Personally, I think the new WRX should be making around 300 horsepower at least. But hey, like I said earlier, it is what it is. Of course, you should only do this on the manual because if you tune the GT trim with the CVT and it breaks, that's going to leave an even deeper hole in your pocket since Subarus are money pits already anyway. I mean, we don't know if the CVT Subaru used on this car is any good, but I just wouldn't put the stress of more power on that CVT. Actually, I just wouldn't buy a car with a CVT at all. I just hope that if or when Subaru releases the SDI version of this car, it will be the opposite of this. Maybe this is only a gimmick from Subaru, who knows. And I wanted to look at this car from a different point of view because at the end of the day, as much as we hate the new look of the new Subaru WRX, we can't control that since it wasn't us who made the car, it was Subaru. Only thing we can control is how and what we should do with the car to improve it. And the flaws of this car shouldn't stop us from considering on buying one. Also get upgraded brakes because I don't see any Brembos on this. So what about you? What do you think of the new 2022 Subaru WRX? Let me know in the comment section below. Also a good portion of my views are starting to come from the US as well as the Philippines. So from this point on, all my videos will be in English. So we're not excluding anyone and everyone can watch our videos. And with that being said, thanks for watching, keep safe and I'll see you on the next video.